Good. Well, hopefully we're working now. We had a bit of a false start there with um, telling me that the speaker wasn't working. Um, but hopefully we are now. And um, I'm not seeing any red lights flash up or anything. So, um, yeah, hopefully all is well. Um, welcome to Morning Prayer on Tuesday, the 15th of February. Very good to see you. Um, and I hope all is well all slightly overcast and grey and rainy here in Staple Grove. Um, I don't know what it's like where you are, hopefully a little bit brighter, but there we are. Anyway, we remember today Siegfried, Bishop, Apostle of Sweden, and Thomas Bray, priest, founder of the SPCK and the SPG um, from the 18th century. Um, and um, we will be hearing words of Psalm 48, and um, continuing in 1 Timothy chapter 6, um, as well as praying today for our bishop, Bishop Ruth, and Bishop's Council, which meets today, um, and um, to deal with, um, I presume, all various issues, um, and um, advise the bishop, and um, so on and so forth. Um, and also, of course, at the moment, within the next week or two, um, the interviews are taking place, I gather, for the Bishop of Bath and Wells post, which is currently vacant. So we pray for that, as well as all the things in our hearts and lives um, and around the world. Um, and you can follow the words, as always, um, on the app, the Daily Prayer app, or in the link which I've posted. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we awake, refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and for ever. Amen. And so to the words of Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple, O God. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks pass through her citadels. You may tell those who come after that such is our God forever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Turning to the New Testament, to 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 11 to end. Paul writes this, as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. 
take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that, is, that really is life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you. Avoid the profane chatter and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have missed the mark as regards the faith. Grace be with you. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. So we turn now to pray for the world, the church, and the day before us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for these words of Paul to Timothy, encouraging him to pursue all good things. Pursue all that is godly and good. Lord, we pray that you would help us to do likewise, not to pursue worldly things, even worldly knowledge, but to be led by your Holy Spirit, that the fruits of your Spirit may grow in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world that you have made, remembering our role as humankind to steward creation, to look after your world. Lord, we know that it's not something we've done very well. Lord, we're sorry for the ways in which we have abused your planet and continue to do so. And we pray that you would open our eyes and hearts, well, to do better. Not just in how we use the resources of the world and we care for the physical environment, but in how we treat one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at the moment, we, we're preparing for our Lent course, which begins after half term in a couple of weeks' time. And we thank you for the many people signed up for our Lent course already, focusing upon justice, justice in different ways, including justice in creation. And Lord, we pray even now that you'll be working in our hearts and minds to be receptive to your word. To be open to be challenged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do pray for those parts of the world where peace is fragile, especially continuing to lift to you Ukraine and their border with Russia. And that uh, tension at the moment, Lord, we thank you for the attempts by many people 
to find a diplomatic solution. Lord, we do pray that that will indeed be the case. Lord, we pray that you would watch over that and ensure that peace prevail. So we ask for your protection to be upon that situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who are in the midst of famine or disaster. We pray, Lord, for those places in the world where there is famine or drought, for those victims of natural disasters, those who've suffered in recent months. And Lord, we pray for those locally too who don't have. We pray for those who are in need, remembering the precious work done by our food bank and Open Door and other agencies. Lord, we thank you that our churches support the work of the food bank. And we pray that you would release in our hearts the gift of generosity to love and serve those around us who need at particular times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're asked today to pray for those who are victims of abuse and violence, intolerance and prejudice of any kind. Lord, we thank you for the considerable progress made in recent years, decades even. But Lord, we know that there is much work still to be done in so many different ways. And Lord, we know that the church is by no means immune from these challenges. So Lord, we pray that the light of your presence uh, will open our eyes and hearts to be challenged and transformed that we may see everything and everyone from your perspective as a beloved child of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for our church, we thank you for St John's and All Saints churches in our benefice. Thank you for the meeting last night of our vision group. As we reflected upon all the, the progress, the work that we've made and done in the last 12 months or so. And Lord, we lift to you the plans that we have to develop further, not least in our outreach to families and young children, in our work to develop our premises, maximise our buildings, in encouraging our charitable giving, among other things. Lord, we pray that your spirit will continue to lead and guide us in that process. And Lord, we do pray today, especially for Bishop's Council as they meet, holding Bishop Ruth continually in our prayers as we hold the process to identify and appoint the next Bishop of Bath and Wells. So Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will bless abundantly that process and the Bishop's Council meeting today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do lift before you as always those people we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, those perhaps who are feeling lonely or anxious, we pray in particular for Barbara at this time, Michael as he undergoes uh, surgery, for Jenny and Jean and Rosemary. <coughs> Lord, we pray too for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. particular we pray today for Chris Young having lost his his brother recently and for 
for Hannah having lost um, her mother Annie. And we pray, Lord, that they would uh, have a sense of your presence and a hope that we can find only in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we pray for the day that lies ahead of us today, not least the, uh, the neighbourhood coffee morning at St John's Church today, at Staple Grove. Lord, we thank you for this initiative which seeks to provide hospitality and welcome to the surrounding community. So, Lord, we thank you for that and we pray that that will be a real blessing to everyone who comes. And, Lord, we pray even right now that your Holy Spirit will work in the hearts and minds of those perhaps who might be thinking of coming. We pray that you would beckon them on. And Lord, we pray for the rest of the day's encounters, meetings, engagements, discussions, decisions. And we pray simply that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide us and that we may be faithful to your call upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace, so to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless us, preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great to have you with me, whether it's live um, here on Tuesday morning or whether it's later on on catch up. I hope that you have a good day and um, look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care. <laughs>